Epic. Hey guys, welcome to EDM Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to make melodic techno in the style of Solomon. Again, carrying on my series of In the Style Of, I've been getting loads of requests for Solomon, so that is what I decided to do today. You can download all of the samples and the project file completely free below this video. I'm going to be doing this today using just the stock plugins within Ableton Live 10, but you can follow along in any door because the principles apply no matter what software you're using. And remember, if you like it, please give it a big fat thumbs up and share it with your friends. We will be going into the chord progression, we will be covering the drums and percussion, we'll be covering effect, mixing and arrangement today so there's loads to get through. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for tutorials like this each and every week and without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, I'm going to do this in one take bilio so forgive any mistakes I make. This is techno, melodic techno in the style of Solomon. First thing we're going to do is set the tempo, 125. You can check other music in the same genre to get an idea of what tempo it should be. Lovely. Next thing, let's name this bad boy. I'm going to call it Solomon's Mine. My Solomon. Right, let's save that. Boom. So the first thing I've got to do from my magic list is discuss the vibe really quickly. So Solomon's tunes are quite stripped back and simple. They use um, like classic drum machine sounds, which give it a bit of grit and a bit of texture. You know, they're not super polished, which I quite like. So um, we're going to start off with a, an emotive chord progression that we're going to lead to in the break. And then we're going to do the beats and the bass and all of that good stuff. So I've just loaded in a uh, normal grand piano um, patch from Ableton, that comes with Ableton, and I'm going to draw in, I'm going to just jam in some notes actually with the metronome playing. Cool, so it's in the key of D sharp minor by the sound of things, let's add some chords to that. Nice and simple. If you don't know how to play the piano, like me, uh, then you can draw it in in the MIDI as well. And the way we can do this is use my technic, uh, template technique. Um, you can use the scale plugin for Ableton and you've got the templates in FL Studio, so that's cool. But let's really quickly just draw in all the notes in D sharp minor. And the way you can really easily do that is start on A and just draw in all the white notes. And that's the key of, or the scale of A minor natural. And because every minor scale has the same intervals in between each note, you can see here it's two intervals between this note and this note, you can grab them all, whack them up to D sharp, and now you've got the, when that's basically the key of D sharp minor, uh, D sharp minor natural. So I'm going to drag one octave down and then another octave up, because when we press fold in Ableton, We've now got three octaves of the scale of D minor natural. So I'll just grab them all, press left to get them out the way of the clip. And now we can actually start drawing those notes in. So let's start on the D, um, D, D, D sharp, sorry, D sharp minor. That's what the scale is. And then you can see any notes that you hit are going to sound good because they're in the right scale. Let's knock that down a couple of octaves. Hold shift, press down twice. Ooh, deep. Right, so what I'm going to do is, in fact, I, I shuffled all of the template down as well. So I'll draw, the, I'll draw the chords in first, just by skipping notes. First, I'm going to go up one octave and then draw the, codes in, uh, the chords in there so they don't clash with the bass. And I'm just skipping a note each time like this. And you can do that the same. So the root note is the C sharp, and the root note is the B, and the root note is the G sharp, and then miss a note, miss a note. You know, it's really basic. So 
So we're going to be leading up to this in the in the break. Uh, now I'm going to add some processing to this really quickly. First, I'll put an EQ on, get rid of some of the low frequencies so they don't clash with our bass when we do that. There we go. And now I'm going to put on, let's see what I've got here. I think what I'm going to put on is an echo. So if we go to my echo in my collection, reverb delay, here we go. Put ping pong on, turn off dotted note. Adjust the dry and wet. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on an auxiliary channel so I've got more control over it. So um, I'm going to create this, call it Piano Dell. Colour it bluish, so I can see it's for that instrument. Paste that echo thing, turn it to 100% wet, then feed some of my grand piano into that. Adjust the feedback, open this filter thing. Cool. I actually want that to sound a bit more uh, compressed, that piano, so it's a bit more in your face. So I'm going to put the compressor after the EQ, and then I'm just going to compress it a bit. So it sounds more sustained. Cool. Okay, on to the next thing. The kick, that's kind of the most important thing, really. I'm not going to use uh, a MIDI track for the kick. I'm going to do it in audio just for a change from the usual. Color it green because that's my um, drum color. And let's go into the, the um, slimming samples I've got here, chosen here. So I've got quite a nice soft kick, uh, but nice, nice and bassy as well. So let's just program that on, on the beat. Let's see if it needs to be. I'm going to put my put that down minus six. I'm going to turn the piano right down as well, just so we don't have any clipping on the master channel. If we start our track at this with these levels, it's much easier. So quickly get those knocked in. Color that blue because it's my piano or pianpo, as I seem to write. Cool. Okay. Assign track colors. Call it piano. Next thing on my list is. Da, 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 da. Oh, I don't know actually. Drums. Yeah. The drums. How can you forget the drums world? It's freaking techno. Right. So I've got a drum rack. I've got my auxiliary reverbs, especially the room reverb. That's the most important one. I've got that dialed in so I can assign, assign a portion of it to any of my drums. So I can close that and just have the sends showing. So let's get some of these drums in. The first thing I'm going to do is add a ride cymbal that's going to play on every kick and it's just going to give it more, um, more atmosphere. So current project again. There we go, lovely jubbly. Let's put that in. And I'm just going to put one of these on every single beat where the kick goes as well. But it's a bit in your face, so I'm going to turn it down. And I also want it to be a bit shorter. I'm going to turn it to one voice because I don't want the first ride kind of overlapping into the second one. I might actually... tune it to the track as well. And it's slightly left. And then I'm going to use a filter frequent uh, filter to cut out the low end. Just to make it cleaner. And then dial in some of that room reverb. Tweak the room reverb decay time. Okay. I'm going to turn off the piano whilst we do the rest of the drums, but next we're going to do some really cool stuff with loops. I am a bit like Bob Ross, aren't I? Right, okay, but with less hair. Um, and with way nicer 
a way nicer body for sure. Okay, let's get that drum loop in there. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go. You know, I had a, a look for some of these things earlier. Cool. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is um, use this electro loop and I'm going to mess it up and make an interesting kind of techno rhythm with it. I'm not just going to play the loop standard. First I'm going to chop it up a bit. Like so. So the clap's not happening so often. And then I'm going to do some funky stuff. First I'll take out some of the low end. And then I'm going to use some auto filters to create some interesting movement and then an auto pan as well. I'm going to use the LFO. I'm going to put the rate to be synced with the track rather than um, the hertz. That's cool. I'm actually going to put another one on afterwards and do it slightly slower so it's getting double LFO goodness. Let's put some re room reverb on. I'm going to put an auto panner on and that is just to um, give some, let's see, where would my auto panner be? There we go. I'll also put it in utilities. Um, and that's just to give it some extra width by doing some crazy fast panning. Cool. So that's one thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to make another loop and I'm going to do that by just creating loop two and I'm going to add some reverse here. So um, you could, yeah, you could just find a loop that you like and then you can press um, R in Ableton. So it started out like this and I'm just pressing R and it's going to reverse it, which is pretty cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out some of the low end on that as well, like so. It's like a record going backwards and then I'm going to chop it up a bit and just use a bit less of it. Just like that will do. And then I'm going to duplicate it. And then you could cons consolidate that if you wanted as well. Reverse loop. Just Command and J, and again with this you could loop one and then consolidate the whole bad boy. Let's colour this green too so it's all in matching, and then bosh onto the next thing. I know what I'm going to do to this. I'm going to quickly add a echo, an echo onto this and I'm going to give, give it two slightly different settings. just to add some extra interest in the stereo field. Okay, on to the next thing. We have got the bass. Oh no, let's add in some more percussion first. We really need to get a groove going. So next I'm going to add in some toms. So let's listen to my toms. We 
We've got these two. I'll load those in for sure. Like a tabla. Bongo. And the 808 conga. That's going to be the extra thing to give the, the give some more grooves to the track. So open up fold. Now I want the conga to stop playing when the MIDI stops being drawn, so I'm just going to turn everything apart from sustain off. Put voices on so we don't have any overlapping. And then the last one, we're going to do a little bit of skip to switch things up a bit. There we go. And then we will just copy that. You can hear that echo going on in the background. And now let's add in a little bit more interest with these percussions. Not too much, remember, strip back and minimal, but you still need that groove. I might change this tom to this to blah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm liking that. So I'm just going to copy and paste that, copy and duplicate it rather. Make sure I take out those congas where they would be clashing there with the tabla that we put in. And then we are going to add the couple of hats as well, just to add some more texture. So I'm going to have this hat just play at the same time as the bongo just to give it some sharp, more sharpness. So again, let's duplicate that. Pan them left and right. Bits at least. And that's, and that's going to add some um, stereo width to the drums as well. And of course, we can add some of the room reverb to them as well. Or even some room reverb, uh, sorry, some full reverb with a, with a longer decay for some of them. And that's already good, they're just a bit loud. But we'll do a bit of, of mixing later as well. Cool, that sounds pretty pretty nice. Might turn down those crazy echoes on the loops a bit. Cool, next let's do the bass, right. We've got two different basses we're going to do in this track. We're going to do a rhythmic techno bass, and then we're going to do an epic techno bass. So first we'll do the rhythmic one, and we're going to do this really quickly using the operator. And I'm just going to create a MIDI clip. And we're going to do it in the key of the track, which is D sharp minor. But obviously that's way too up, high up, so we can go down a couple of octaves, more than a couple. Probably about there. And then I'm just going to draw in a pattern and just going to repeat that by duplicating it all the way along. And then we're going to go in and edit this. So we want to reduce the sustain and then it's a bit more of a plucky sound and we're just going to tweak it with the decay. Like so. 
and we'll add a bit of a side chain compressor to have it pump. So we just drag a compressor on and we'll call it pump comp. And then we'll take the sidechain input from the sidechain track, which has just got uh, the outputs are sent to sends only, so you can't hear the drum that's playing here. And it's just a rim shot, so it's really short and sharp on every beat, on where every kick will hit. And then we can use that signal just as a sidechain trigger rather than being able to hear it. So if we go to the kick, at, sorry, the bass, and see what's going on, we can take the threshold down. And you can see it's now being pumped by that side chain. So I'll tweak the stack and release. Cool. And I'm also going to do something a bit naughty. I'm going to use something that doesn't come with Ableton. It's the Ozone Imager. It's completely free from Isotope. Um, I'll put the link to it below this video. And I'm gonna add some stereo width in the sub bass. Now this is naughty and I wouldn't usually do this, but you know, it's Friday and I'm feeling a little bit naughty, so why not? We just need to check in mono and make sure that we're not running into phase issues. Still sounds good. This tool is amazing, honestly. Cool, so let's add some other, oh, all the other drums too. We need a little bit of a clap sound, so I'm gonna go into my samples and I'm gonna choose some. Um, I'm gonna choose a Commodore 64 clap. For the old school, you know what I'm talking about. Let's have a listen. So, we're just gonna have this hit every other kick as well, sorry. No, <laughs> half as often as you'd expect in a house track. just to add some of those higher frequencies. And we are going to add a little bit of an open hat and then some closed hats as well. This open hat sounds a little bit mucky in the low end, so I'm gonna put a filter on there, filter out some of the low end. Not that much, thank you very much. Cool. Put some room reverb on it. Turn it down a bit and just use it as a little bit of interesting texture. Perhaps half as often as that. You could, we could actually tune it as well to the track. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, okay, next we are going to add this closed hat to give it some, you know, some real groove. We're just gonna put that on every single 16th beat. Just duplicate it all the way along, lovely jubbly. And then I'm gonna tweak it slightly, take out some of the low end, change the start point so it's right on it. Turn it down a bit. I'm going to tweak the ADSR controls to make it um, a bit shorter. That's a pretty nice, nice beat. Let's hear it with the piano. That's not epic enough. Right, let's, let's play with this piano. I'm gonna zoom out a bit. I'm gonna drop the bass notes right down again. And I'm gonna reduce the velocity so they just hit a little bit harder than the high note. Maybe up an octave. And I'm going to add some more high notes as well, just to make it a bit more interesting. Again, you can use the te uh, template technique to do this, but I'll, 
I'll add the seventh notes in and I'll take out the root as well. Because the root's being played by the bass notes anyway. Up an octave. Up an octave. And that's just chord inversions. Now let's do the second bass, which is going to be a lot kind of more epic when the when it comes in after the main break. So I'm just going to create another MIDI track, call that bass two. And let's just draw this in. Uh, again, you can use the template technique, draw in all the notes of D sharp minor, and then draw in the bass notes, but I'm just going to copy and paste them from the piano because it's easy. Copy, paste, um, but I've pasted their kind of lower velocity, so I'll just hold command and drag them all up so they've got maximum velocity. And velocity can control, you know, any parameter you really choose. Well, Depends on the synth as to which parameters you can assign the velocity to, but we are going to use the analog, which comes with Ableton 10. I think it's Ableton 10 Suite it comes with. Mm -mm -mm. Let's have a quick listen. Yeah, that sounds dope, mate. Um, so we are going to obviously tweak this sound. We're going to do a filter envelope to make it kind of go. So I'll turn the filter down a bit and then open the envelope, attack up. And I'm just attacking, uh, sorry, just tweaking the decay as well and the sustain. So it's kind of a swell. Let's have a listen to that. And this last note might be too low. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. So we want to have that, um, just trying to think how we can make that nice and wide. Uh, what we could do is we've got these two oscillators here, oscillator one, oscillator two, they're both um, saw waves, so we're going to detune it slightly. Give it that 80s feel. Now, can we pan these left and right? They seem to be connected somehow. Okay, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. how am I going to do this, split this? So there are two different controls for each of those, and you've got to make sure that when you're choosing where it's being routed, you're routing oscillator 2 to filter 2 to amplifier 2. Um, and then the same with oscillator one as well. So I'm just going to tweak the sounds on um, the amp, uh, the filter envelope for two. So you've got a lovely rich sound now, and we can. That's going to fight with the bass, obviously. So we're going to get a. Um, sidechain compressor on there and we already created one for use on the first bass so we're just going to copy and paste that onto the second bass. Perhaps dial it back a bit. Okay, on to the next thing, and we will be tweaking them all in a little bit too. We have got, um, yeah, we go on to the synth rift, lovely jubbly. There is one thing I like to say that with these, um, let's see, open hats we were using, 
you can actually automate the decay to open it up a bit and that can add some variation and movement in the track. Like so. So that's quite cool. But now let's get onto the kind of epic break with the synth riff as well. We'll turn the piano on. Needs more bass actually. And more epicness really. So I'm just going to add some more um, notes kind of lower halfway through. So it's like an open chord basically, which means it's got notes on different octaves. So this is without that, and this is with it. So it just adds, fills out those middle frequencies a bit. Epic. Adding some hall reverb as well, making sure that the low end is taken out on the auxiliary channel. And we can actually go onto the piano delay and add some higher frequencies on, on just the delay. A bit resonant. Quite a nice texture though. Especially for the trick that I have got to show you very soon. If you're enjoying it so far, give me a hell yeah below. Um, let me know what you want me to cover next. Without further ado, let's crack on, but do leave me that comment because I love it and it makes my Friday awesome. And whichever day you make, you, you, you make it on, that makes that day awesome too. Okay, let's get some synth riff on the go. I'm going to use, again, the analog, and I'm gonna just browse through some presets and find something that sounds quite analog-y and old. Um, so we go synth leads. Epic. Yeah, like a Juno, Juno kind of synth. So we just drag that on. Turn it down because it's well loud. Like, that's pretty epic. So let's write a riff for this that is going to kind of bring the whole track together. And we'll do it over the piano. But again, you can draw in the notes of D minor natural and then use the template technique, but I'm just going to kind of jam it out. I'll take out some of the uh, bass frequencies on that because it's a bit, bit too bassy. We don't want it to clash with everything. And then let's just add some hall reverb. So we can just record that in or we could, um, you know, program it in, but uh, let's do it recording. Let's try again, shall we? That will do nicely. Just consolidate that if it hadn't already, and then go in and tweak it. I'm just going to press 
command and U to quantize it, and then I'm gonna have to tweak some of these bad boys, I know that. Whoops. So we need that groove, we need it to hit before. So the quantize has taken it off where I should have done it really, kind of screwed things up a bit there. We need it to hit just before those beats to give it the, the groove. Cool, okay, so we've done that. Now we are going to add a tiny little bit of loads of crazy effects to this. Am I gonna add, the magic list tells me to. Magic list tells me to, magic list is the ruler. So, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of EQ, already done that. I'm taking out these frequencies a bit because they're clashing with the piano. So it just cleans up the mix a bit. You know, it's not a perfect mix. I'm doing it quickly just to show you some techniques, but now I'm gonna put one of those lovely ozone images on it and spread it out. Check in mono. And that's how I'm checking in mono. I've got a utility and a keyboard shortcut to turn mono on and off. You can check out my other videos about that. Um, lovely, so we're gonna call this synth riff. And then we're gonna get onto a little bit of arrangement um, after I do one more addition of a sound and it's gonna be an effect to, to give it some more depth. So I'm just gonna color this my cyan color because it's a synth. Call it synth riff. It's, it pays to be organized. That's what my teachers always told me, and I never listened to them. Kind of wish I had. Right, okay, on to the next thing. This effect. It's just gonna be like using vinyl crackle, but I'm gonna use something I recorded from one of my journeys around the world, like Phileas Fogg. Um, you know, that lion who used to go up in a hot air balloon on Saturday mornings. Very old school cultural reference. Right, Pai. Hot springs in Pai in Northern Thailand. Takadas. I'm just gonna filter out some of the low frequencies. And now I'm gonna add some crazy modulation to that using again, I think I'll use the auto filter. Um, whack up the LFO amount and then try a similar effect that we were using on the beats earlier. So I'm kind of making my own custom laser sound. I'm gonna do the EQ after that though because I wanna have a bit more control over it. So what I'm going to do is just use a bit of that, kind of as an effect sweep at the beginning, and then fade it out a bit. And then I could add, I could just feed it into the same delay as the piano. Which is quite cool. Um, it's still a mono, I think. Oh no, it is. But I'm not going to do that, I'm going to create my own one for that because it's a unique sound and it needs unique treatment. As people do. Right. Let's turn that, because this is on the channel and it's not on the auxiliary channel, we're going to, we, we can't dial it to 100% wet because that means it'll only be the delayed signal, so ping pong delay. That's pretty cool. Just crazy effects keep on going in the background. Bump up the feedback a bit. Tweak the level. I'm 
I'm going to make this base bigger and warmer. And the way I'm going to do that is add a little bit of saturator. And yep, yeah, that will do for now. I'll play with the ride a little bit. But the piano and the bass too wouldn't be playing here, it would just be like this. Know, we'd be getting the groove for the track going. And we build up, build up, and this could take, you know, three or four minutes to build up to this break because it's, you know, um, Solomon's tracks are, you know, seven, eight minutes long. Proper get your groove on. So I'm going to introduce this um, riff over time. So we get to the break, yada yada yada. And there'd be other stuff going on too. And let's just bring in the hi-hats. The ride, sorry. That's had more interest to those actually. We're going to add a secondary ride just before each one and take down the volume a bit. So it's like this. So it just adds more, more rhythm and groove. Very subtle. So I'm going to actually replace the ride pattern I had before with that just because I think it sounds better like that. I just found it it wasn't providing enough groove in the break. So I'll delete those, add them there too. So you can barely actually hear it when all the drums are going. And then when the kick comes in we're going to have an EQ on it. Whoops. No, not yet. Not yet. Whoa there, Nelly. Hold your horses. We've got to build that tension first. Big time. I don't know how long is too long. I'd refer to the tracks that I'm, you know, are in the same genre so I could get guidance over how long these things should be. Or I just feel it out. I have a suspicion that um, Solomon does a lot of his stuff on the external gear because it sounds quite not improvised, but he's bringing in loops, he's taking them out in different places. Right, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to just introduce the first part of this loop first, and we're going to have a filter over it. So I'll just do it with... Uh... Then we might have the bass come in, but stay on the first note. See, when, when the bass note changes, it's going to release all that tension. So we can have that bass come in, and then... So the piano is still changing chords, but the bass is remaining constant, and that's going to build up the, the tension. We could actually add another top riff here as well. Oh yeah, feels. Uh, 
And then um, you take some of the elements out and then everything would come in together at the same time and it would be, and it would be epic. Or you could drop it back, um, back to a stripped back drop. But then you take the EQ off the kick, of course, as well. Right, you, you take off out the piano there, if you were to do that kind of drop. So I'm just gonna add a um, this little effects rack I put together. Uh, where would it be? It would be in, let's see, Will's transition effects. I'm gonna do it on the master channel. Now I wouldn't do this if I was producing properly, but um, just for a quick example, I'll automate this. So I'll automate the EQ to be on, on the kick in the break, like so. And then I'm gonna automate this transition effects thing, um, like so. That is just a chain of different plugins and it's gonna sound like this. That bass there could actually be an octave lower. Or maybe two of them. Ah, there's no sidechain compressor there. So the sidechain trigger track wasn't copied there, so you could hear it was a bit muddy, but we want that ducking to be happening on the sub bass. Take the volume down a bit as well. Or of course you could hit the drop, you could kind of build the tension for a bit longer, make a bigger deal of it, and then everything comes in like so here. But then you'd need some sidechain compression on that um, synth riff as well. And on the piano so it doesn't clash and it allows the, the kick to punch through a bit more. You could even add to the riff, the synth riff. Perhaps an octave up. Just to add a, an extra layer of epicness when you get to a certain part in the song and then layer maybe one more synth, kind of cool synth rhythm over the top of that. And of course, full props to Solomon for the inspiration for this. There was one, that, that was the cool thing I was going to show you. So, just added some harsh high frequencies there in the piano. So this is what we're going to do with the piano delay. We're going to take this piano out. 
and we're going to use that uh, echo and we're going to increase the feedback to like almost 100% so it becomes it becomes a rhythmic organic sound in itself that we're going to play un like that You could even cut this bit out. Oh no, right, 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 right. Wait there a sec, hold on. Hold your horses. What we're gonna do is we're gonna continue on this vein because I'm, I'm liking it, but we're not gonna take the piano in yet. Um, what we might do is take, show the automation. We're gonna take the um, delay piano off when it starts to come in again. So we're just going to run with that piano delay. And then we're going to filter the piano in underneath it. Like this. So you can see how um, arrangement and automation is super important important for taking the track down and then up slowly. Sorry for my weird way of speaking just then. I'm just doing it like manually. Here's the bass change. I'd have this build up go longer and hold it here. And then, uh, except I wouldn't have the piano and stuff on. There you go, guys. That is my um, technique into making melodic techno like Solomon. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to do the spiel at the end now, but don't forget to download the files below this video. Give me a hell yeah, a big fat thumbs up if you like it and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Cheers and happy producing.